A New Hampshire is getting warmer. The Environmental Protection Agency and UMass Amherst say our state is nearly three degrees warmer now than it was at the turn of the last century. And the EPA says that will likely cause more droughts in the summer and fall, impacting agriculture, and more floods in the winter and spring, threatening homes, businesses, and recreation. Well, this year, New Hampshire experienced its most intense drought since the U.S. Drought Monitor began keeping records in 2000. And the Union of Concerned Scientists estimates that in 25 years, 2,000 New Hampshire homes totaling $645 million in property value will be at risk of chronic flooding. Mr. Mowers, what specific steps would you take to stop these issues in New Hampshire? Well, thank you, Monica. It's an important issue because uh, human activity does contribute to climate change, but there's common sense steps we can take to reduce that. Uh, you know, first and foremost, we have to uh, obviously monitor and evaluate every single restriction that ensures that pollutants in the air are not contaminating the air to a degree that would increase and contribute to climate change. That's something I think we could probably all agree on. But we also, while we're talking about that, we also have to make sure they're holding polluters from other countries accountable. You know, China and India are actually the biggest polluters in the world. And yet right now, they don't have the environmental standards that we have here in the United States. I'd support actually levying tariffs against uh, companies in China and other countries that do actually not hold themselves to the same environmental standards that we do here in the U.S. That's how you're going to ensure that they're pulling their weight towards this overall cause. What I won't do, though, is put American manufacturers and businesses and throw them under the bus at the time when we're letting China and India get away with sending pollutants in the air the way they do. Representative Pappas, what legislation in Congress have you supported to reverse these effects? And specifically, what parts of the legislation do you find most important? Well, climate change is real. It's here. We see it all around us. We see it in our own state along the coast. We see it with the moose population, shorter ski seasons, and it's going to get a lot worse from that. You know, there's an interpretive sign down by the salt marsh and rye that shows that by the year 2100, we're going to see six feet of sea level rise on top of that salt marsh if nothing is done. I don't want to see that future for our New Hampshire. That would be a catastrophe for our economy and our way of life, and the cost of doing nothing is too great. That's why I support legislation to get us to net zero emissions by the year 2050. It's an idea that's endorsed by the League of Conservation Voters and the Sierra Club, two groups supporting my campaign. Um, in addition to that, I work on the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, and we've done a lot of work on how can we not just rebuild what we have, but rebuild it so it's resilient to climate change, using cleaner and greener materials, electric vehicle charging infrastructure, reducing emissions, more funding for rail projects like we'd like to see here in southern New Hampshire, uh, and in addition to that, a provision I introduced around bike and pedestrian infrastructure, creating local connections, taking cars off the roads. This is the future that we can build together if we have the right leadership in Congress.